Oh, hello. Welcome again to The Naked Truth. My name is Lauren Becker and this is the space where we get to talk about the truths of life, the things that we keep private, the things that we keep hidden, and the things that if we only spoke into them would actually connect us, empower us, and create more love and joy in our life than we actually thought possible. So today I have the amazing, the amazing Eric Bergen from Eric Bergen Photography. He's just jumped on. I just want to introduce him first. Um, this epic human is, oh, how do I describe him? So he is the magic behind my most recent photo shoot. If you haven't seen them, then they are floating around. You can jump on my Facebook uh, and have a look at them. Um, he is just magic. So I'll give you a little spiel on Eric with a K. He is just amazing. Eric with a K photographs the icons of our time. From a working class family in Norway, he saved every penny to move to Australia as a 19 year old. Having given up his childhood passion for photography, he dove into the world of sales and marketing. But it was never quite fulfilling and through a dark night of the soul period at 26 years old, he recommitted to his art form. Now he is one fourth of the Goddess Haven Quartet, facilitating the community event Conscious Leaders on the Gold Coast. If you haven't been there, you need to get to one. They are epic and breaking barriers as a self-employed photographer. Join us for a conversation today. We're going to have a conversation around mission, love, and the importance of full body fuck yeses. So let me bring this amazing as well. He is one incredible human being and he is just jumping on now. So he is also the first male of our Naked Truth series. Hello, 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 hello. Are you, there we are. Yay. Let me just, yay, let me just, am I echoing at all? Can you hear me okay? I Guys, can... if you've just jumped on, can you just let me know? Barely hear you, me? there we go. Can you hear me okay? Awesome. Let me just. How are you? I'm very well, thank you. Amazing, amazing. Mm. Oh, this is such a juicy conversation. I'm excited. I'm really excited. Mm. Great to be here. Great Thank to be you here. so Thanks much for, for coming on. on. So you're actually um, our first male. I was just explaining you're the first male. Um, hey, Izzy, of our Naked Truth series. And I want to really thank you for being that person because essentially for me when I started this, it was um, communicating with women about the truths that we navigate through. And... The reason why I have decided to open it up to everyone um, is essentially because there is a huge piece in it for women with the masculine and also at the end of the day, we're all human beings as well. So I'd really love to also have the men in my community be able to be empowered as well as the women. And you get to be the first one because... I know that we've spoken into this, but you made such an impact in my life. Um, so I'll give you a bit of um, content to the context of the situation. Um, so last year, we both did an event bridge with Preston and Alexi. Um, and in this event, I was actually randomly, not, never random, sat next to Eric. And there were some things that unfolded and his girlfriend actually ended up up there running the thing and there were some bits and pieces that I got triggered from Jamie by um, and Eric sat next to me just holding space for my triggers. I, I thought it was so beautiful that you never once, you know, judged me or anything like that for them. You just allowed them to unfold. And um, yeah, so that was the very, very, very first piece for me. There were a few more, but I, you know, we can, we can go into it another time, but you just made such an impact in my world and you've since been making an impact in my world and I'd love to share you with my community. So mm. I would love for you to be able mm. to share 
you who who is eric with a k and how how did you get oh. here mm. oh yes oh <laughs> um, we could tell some stories lauren you and i yeah. i'm so thrilled about this so before i before i really go and i'm i'm so down to go there um i'd like to acknowledge i'd like to acknowledge you for mm. the work that you're putting in there's a lot of people I see this in this space. There's a lot of people talking. Um, there's a lot of people wanting. And there are a few people doing. And mm. um, what you're stepping into now with The Naked Truth and your women's work is, um, is a sign of that you're one of the doers. And so mm -hmm. I just want to reiterate the importance of these conversations. Mm. I, was, um, I was having a... Um, I do a lot of photography of, of women and my work tends to attract women. And so um, seeing the way that most women um, experience themselves mm. in this day and age is quite haunting. Mm. And so um, to start this conversation off on a serious note, what you're doing is real. Uh, and I see you on your mission, and it is a fucking mm. privilege to be here. Mm, thank you. I appreciate you, and I oh. appreciate that. Thank you. Mm. So, what to know about me? Hey, Andy. Oh, hell yeah. Oh, Steph is here as well. <laughs> Steph, you beautiful Oh, the, pa the party just got <laughs> a lot better. I love it. So, about me, mm. I'm, a, I'm a bit of an eccentric. So, the first thing that, that you need to know about me is um, right now, I really freaking love what I get to do. Like, mm. I fr it's an obsession at this point. Uh, I love it. I believe that we're raising the vibration of the planet. I believe that we're in a very particular time in human history and um, coming together. It's now a coming togetherness. It's the death of a lone wolf and it's coming together. And my message or my, my mission is to share important messages that need to be heard through photography. So I love it. I love it. It's a blessing. It wasn't always this way though. It really wasn't always this way. And there's a lot of pain and frustration and heartache and confusion and giving up and settling in, in my story mm -hmm. up until now, you know, and it's only getting started. So how good is that? How good is that? Ah, one of the key. Yeah, this will be valuable. So the key dynamic that played out in my life early on, right? Eric as a kid, right? Imagine me without a beard. Mm -hmm. And <laughs> actually you met me without a beard. I had, I had, was I did. when we met. <laughs> I love the beard. Full I think on transformation. Such a replication and such a beautiful external like representation of your internal. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. One piece. Thank you. Yeah. I, I fully <laughs> received that. So if you imagine me, you know, as an 11 year old with no beard, okay. Um, the key dynamic that you would have found, right, in me would have been uh, number one is my job was to protect my sister. Mm -hmm. I have a younger sister, her name is Astrid and I love her to death. And as an 11 year old, um, I was very much in that protector role. I found this is my mission in life is to make sure that she's happy. Now, I never told anyone this. I didn't tell her this. I didn't tell my parents this. It was just this internal knowing that this is my mission. Now, uh, what happened, as you can imagine, when an 11-year-old takes, takes, puts his whole life worth and his whole uh, mission into looking after someone else, um, knowing what I know now, it's a recipe for absolute fucking disaster. Mm. Right? Taking responsibility for somebody else's life and well-being. So that was the pattern that I was running and my whole life was predicated on making sure the feminine, my sister in this case, and my mother was safe and okay. If they were fine, I could relax until they were fine. I could not rest. So it's an interesting place to come from, you know, coming into uh, adulthood and, now being completely released from mom and dad, I, mom and dad and my sister, I never, I, you know, I don't live with them. I don't see them very much, uh, but the pattern keeps playing. 
And so the pattern keeps playing and the pattern keeps playing. And I had girlfriends and the pattern kept playing and I had friends and the pattern kept playing. And so um, what I'm really stepping into now is looking after my own inner girl, woman, feminine. Mm. And that, I believe, is a conversation that's worth having. Um, quick story. Let, let's get everyone up to speed so Beautiful. they understand. So um, 11 years old, grew up with, his, with a younger sister, took full ownership of, uh, of her well-being, right? And then found photography at 11 years old. I was a super strange kid. A lot happened at 11. And then... Um, <laughs> I would get up. So here's a Sunday morning for you. Here's a Sunday morning at, in Eric Bergen's life, right? I would get up. Uh, I would put seven layers on because it was Norway and it was freezing, right? So negative 21 degrees. Negative 21, okay? Ouch. Now, your, your freezer at home here in Australia, your freezers are negative 18, okay? So it was negative 21, right? So past the freezer, right? And I'm getting uh, seven layers and I'm get, I've got my big bomber jacket. I've got photos. It's hilarious. Big bomber jacket and I'm getting up and it's 4.30 in the morning. Guess what? Complete darkness. 4.30 in the morning, I'm getting up. Why is he getting up at 4.30? I'm walking, I'm walking. I'm, I'm, I'm trekking through the snow. Darkness. I find this lake. There's a lake that was near, my, near our house and I sat by this lake and I was waiting with a camera for the for the sunrise oh my sunrise. gosh that's yeah it's safe to say i found my passion all right <laughs> so <laughs> that was just instinctive like they say like whatever you're doing between seven and 14 that's what your life passion is and so i found my passion and that became my my uh, kind of source of childlike creativity as a as a kid i went i went did roundabouts and i did other things but that was kind of like a, a solid uh, con constant thing and then I gave it up and this mm. is what I want to talk to I gave it up at 21 I gave it up I um I was playing the story of a uh, starving artist uh, I was surrounding myself with broke uni students and I was uh, losing faith in, in the fact that I could do this as a as a career and so um I didn't, I said, I said, you know what? I'm going to put the camera, I sold all my camera gear. Still remember the day when I sold all my photography gear. Um, there was, there was real grief. And um, anyone who's, anyone who's given up on their passion at some point in their life knows the pain mm -hmm. and the hopelessness of that moment. Hmm. And so um, I picked myself up and I moved on. I said, I'm going to do something that makes sense. Um, something that makes money. So I went into sales and marketing and um, got swept up in, in that. Loved it. You know what? Absolutely loved it. It was an incredible rush. There was, it was new information. It was a positive environment. Uh, money became something that became a positive reinforcement. I could work as hard mm -hmm. as I wanted. I could make as much as I wanted. Um, I got to travel. Yeah. It became an incredibly empowering environment for me i would do it again i'd recommend it to anyone um so i was running sales teams knocking doors selling food like food boxes to people and uh, i learned so much i learned i attributed so much of my communication skills now to that those four and a half years of knocking doors forty six thousand doors uh, and people Whoa. i spoke to um oh my yeah goodness. yeah you can you can just imagine the amount of the, the amount of situations, right? Imagine in your head, like, what could possibly happen when walking around knocking on doors? Yes, I've done it. I've done it, and I've probably done it more than 10 times. It's probably happened more than 10 times. So you name it, right? Like, bring up any situation. Has this happened? I'll be like, oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Let me tell you a story. So amazing time, right? Incredible time. And then I went to a similar workshop, um, exactly the same workshop. Um, as you did. And I came to that room not knowing what I needed. I was burnt out and um, I didn't know why. Right? I couldn't understand it. You know, I was making good money. I, was, I had this beautiful relationship with my queen mm -hmm. uh, who I'd love to dive into that because that is an incredible story and I want to spread that to the world because I never thought that was possible for me to have this relationship. Mm -hmm. I came to bridge and I said, whatever it is, I'm open. 
whatever it is, I'm open. <laughs> One of the things I learned at through through knocking doors is like whatever I'm doing, I'm going all in. And so I said, I'm gonna, I'm just gonna go for it. And what happened? I felt like, you know, uh, you know, in the movies, right, when they're at the hospital, and they've got the they've got a patient on the table, and they go clear <laughs> with the, with the electrode, like, clear, and then and I was like, <sighs> yes. <sighs> Oh. <sighs> totally. And I was brought back to life. Mm. That 11 year old is still in there, man. That 11 year old waiting for the sunrise is still in there. And uh, through that workshop, which is led so profoundly well, through that workshop, I was guided to find a place in my heart where my life it was unacceptable for me not to live in my passion. Mm. And so uh, at that point I said, okay, I'm going to set myself a goal. I'm going to be a full-time photographer. And uh, now eight months later, that decision is a full on reality in my life. Yes. Ah, I know I get inspired because I like, I never would have imagined it that way. It's such a it's such a journey and I, I really love that you touched on the importance of what you actually went through because I feel like a lot I know myself as well. I had no idea mm. of the commitment that was needing to be made. And anyone who's watching this, if you have any questions for um, Eric or any questions that you want answered, please feel free to drop them below because it's so important to have these conversations around being able to commit to this mission that you feel so deeply on your heart and your passion because I feel like there are so many things that come up in the way that test us with that. And so mm -hmm. I'd really love for you to be able to, um, first and foremost, I would love for you to share the, um, the converse, or not the conversation, the outlay of your interaction and how you created the relationship with Jamie, um, your queen. Mm. For anyone who isn't familiar with Jamie either, by the way, she was our, Jamie is a phenomenal women's embodiment mm -hmm. facilitator. She is epic and she actually is um, our last Naked Truth uh, beautiful co-host. So mm. um, Jamie is Eric's uh, partner in Shine and yeah, they really, there was something that unfolded at Bridge that really struck a chord for me within relationships. Mm -hmm. um, and I don't know if you'll remember that or if that'll even, I can drop that in at the end. But yeah, I'd love for you hmm. to tell that story. Hmm. I would love to. This is, a, okay, amazing. I love that. <laughs> um, so uh, about halfway through the story, you're probably, half of you are going to pause and go and watch the, the, the episode with Jamie because she's... Um, She's extraordinary. Jamie and I, I had this idea of what a relationship could be. I had an idea of what I was shown, yeah, through my parents, through my friends, and because I could see that, that as the idea of a relationship kind of here, I'm like, this is what a relationship is. And I was playing on this scale here. So like, okay, this is a really nice relationship. This is actually a better relationship than I've seen around me. Oh, this is the worst relationship. So I should probably get out of this one or improve it. So I was playing on this scale as a late teens, early 20s. I was playing in this scale. Okay, cool. So what is a good relationship? What is a, a mediocre relationship? what Jamie has represented for me is like, fuck that. This is a relationship. Totally. Like, whoa, 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 whoa. So here's how it begins. Here's the story. Tony Robbins, love the guy to death. Oh my gosh, changed my complete perception. I went to see him at, uh, in 2014. I went to his uh, fire walking event called Unleash the Power Within, represent. Amazing event. Jamie was in the same room. 
7,000 people in the room. We were both in the same room. Didn't meet. I feel like the universe is playing a trick on us. 2015, we come back to the same event because we're badasses and we come back to the same environment. We're in the same room. We don't meet. 2016, we come back in the same room because we're badasses and we come back to the environment. And we meet through Jamie's housemate, who's also called Eric. So that's how we met, through the, through the work, which is what I recommend to ever, anyone who's looking to call in their queen or king. Get yourself in the work. Become the person that's worthy to hold and ready for the container of a relationship because it is fucking mm. stormy as hell. So that's what happened. Uh, we finally connect and we, got, we meet and then we are off. And then we meet and we're off. And it, we go through this like dance of like one and a half years. And then what happened? I was finally starting to tune into my intuition. And one morning, Sunday morning, I wake up and I do my meditation. So, because I'm, I'm getting conscious now and I've learned this thing called meditation. So I'm meditating <laughs> and I'm going, ah, meditating, meditating. And uh, it calls in, you know, moments that you're grateful for. And so, all right. And then she pops into my head, this little, this Jamie Lee figure. And you know what? I said, you know what? I'm going to do something different. I'm going to send her a voice note. So I send her a voice note and I said, Hey, you popped into my meditation. I just want to let you know, I see you and I honor your mission and the path that you're on. We met up that night. We had the most incredible connection. And then we had a break again. So it was this real dance back and forth, back and forth, back and forth and back and forth. What it ended up, um, just to keep, keep this really succinct for people is that we did five months of long distance. Mm. We were in Sydney. The week that we got together, she moved to Brisbane. She said, I'm going to move to Brisbane. So she, boom, she's in Brisbane. And uh, we have five months of long distance. I recommend it. I say it's the best thing that we ever did. And you know why? It, just, it forced us to become intimate with each other's um, personality soul mm. mission without yeah. the physical touch aspect so we didn't yeah. have physical touch on the regular and so we couldn't distract mm. ourselves away from the real issues if there were issues mm. we were going to handle them and so uh, we did five yeah. months of long distance i brought up the question of hey uh, do you um how would you feel about you know me coming to stay with you for a while and and she's like yeah yeah, yeah i'm open <laughs> um, <laughs> another beautiful thing about men and women uh, she says I'm open I go hell yes I pack my car and I organize a farewell party and uh, I moved to Brisbane and um, there's so many stories around that anyway now we're in Brisbane we come to Bridge uh, we decide that this is um, something that's going to help us in whatever way I say, I'm fucking open. And um, we, we broke up and committed to each other for life um, within the space of 90 minutes at, in that workshop. Um, mm. The key piece, there's so much beautiful, be so many beautiful lessons. This is the key piece that comes through now. Key piece was she couldn't feel me. <laughs> She could um, know me and she could sense me. She could, um, she could see that I was there. She couldn't feel me. And this is, a, this, is, this is something that I struggle with my whole life, was having women feel safe around me, right? Remember, uh, that was my mm -hmm. full self-worth was tied up in making my my sister feel safe and so when she said I don't, I don't i don't i can't feel you and so i don't feel safe um what she actually said was i can't choose you because i don't feel you all of you and so that was fucking hard man um i'd love to touch on 
you know, a plea. I have a plea to women that I'd love to share if it, if it comes forward. However, at that point, um, she said, I, I can't feel you. And I, I can't choose you because I don't feel you. Um, I stepped in front of a room of 108 souls. And um, <clears throat> I, for the first time, cried in public as a man. And um, just shared how painful it was to not feel felt and trusted and chosen. So here I am in my mess. And this surprised me, right? So here I am in my mess. And I'm crying. You know, there's 108 people just like holding space for me and witnessing me. Mm -hmm. And um, Jamie stands up in a sea of people. And she says, I fucking choose you. Yeah. Uh. Uh, and I run over and I pick her up. And I think I smack three people in the face with her feet. <laughs> Uh, it was out of a movie. It was right out of a movie. And so that was yeah. Extreme Leadership. Um, mm. That's a workshop called Extreme Leadership. And um, yeah, it's set the tone for our relationship since then. Lino is there. Mm. Hey, brother. Yes. Thanks, thanks hey, Lino. Me. Hey, Krishla. You're, um, you're here for the juicy part. <laughs> and that was, a, that, was, that was the moment that I was speaking into earlier um, that for mm. me, in my feminine as a as a woman to to see you stand up and be totally vulnerable as a man allowed something to shift within me as a woman as well and i feel many other women in that room to be felt to feel the masculine in his vulnerability, but in his power was mm. fucking powerful. And I really, I know you, you got everything you needed out of that moment, but I really would like to thank you and acknowledge you for choosing you in that moment because you also... <sighs> <sighs> I feel like it also allowed some sense of choosing. I don't know in, in what area, on what level, but there was something that I know shifted within and healed, healed the feminine. So I acknowledge you for, for that because that was fucking huge. Mm. <sighs> Thank you, sister. Thank you. <laughs> Ah, oh. <laughs> oh, my goodness. It's the <sighs> realness. So this is the magic. This is the magic mm. of... Yeah. And, the, and the fucking power that comes with vulnerability of, mm. of being ourselves and allowing other people to be seen. And I mm. feel like you now... I don't know if you did it prior, but I feel like you now do it so well, especially, um, I, no, I'm just going to say that. You now do it so well. Yeah. Thank you. And it's. I receive that. Oh, uh, yeah. Kim's just said it gives me faith. Mm. Mm. <sighs> Love Chris just said you two that, are downloading. Kim. Yeah. And Krishla just said, you two are downloading massive, massive ripples right now. Totally. Mm. So much fucking healing. Oh. <sighs> I hope. So, yeah. And if anyone has any questions around that or any reflections around that that they'd love to speak into, please share. This is the platform. <sighs> so I would love for you to... Um, because I now see the relationship that you guys have... I actually, I'm going to retract that. I feel the relationship that you guys have. 
And it is, it is so reassuring for me as well. And yes, Kim, it gives me faith as well. Mm-hmm. Um, and I'd love to know how all that in that moment, for that moment, and whether or not that moment has also allowed an unfolding um, of your business or an impact within your business, because obviously it's transformed your relationship. Mm. Um, How has it all uh, impacted in your business if it has? And Krish, we'll get Mm. to your question just in a second. Let's talk business for all the um, yeah all the people out there, including myself, who are playing out that story of you're either super spiritual and tapped in, or you're rich um, and run a business. Um, we get to have it all. Mm. We get to have it all: <clears throat> the sex, mm. the money, the joy, the fucking given back we get to have it all baby so let's speak to that let's speak to that how did it impact my business let's be let's be tangible about it so i stepped away from a 80 to a hundred thousand dollar role working in sales uh, leading sales teams and i said preston lexi Bridge experience changed my whole life. I'm going to be a photographer again. And I'm, going to, I'm not only going to do it as a hobby because I love it. I'm going to make a fucking amazing income doing that. So I made a decision. I put it out in the universe and said, this is what I'm going to do. And over the last, uh, last four weeks, I have made more money than I did mm-hmm. of eight weeks of my last mm-hmm. previous job. So... That's not to say that's consistent or typical or anything. However, I have found a way to go from zero to a full-time income. I replaced my income completely and I haven't knocked the door in two and a half months. Right? I've just been full on photography, which is what I love. And I've done that in less than, in less than nine months. I believe personally there's a majority, a massive amount of factors, right? I personally believe it has to do with the environment that I put myself in. Uh, I put myself in a vibration. I put myself in a house. And if you know about the goddess haven, if you know about the spiritual Avengers, if you know about conscious leaders, I just put myself in a vibration where complaining, where uh, self-doubt, where um, lone wolfing just is not, uh, it can't breathe in this environment. So I put myself in a sealed container. It's kind of like a workshop every single day because I've sealed my life. I've gone, all right, everywhere I look, everywhere. And when I go downstairs, I meet freaking Kezia Lee, who's like calling me forward and like, I see you. And like, you get to show the fuck up. And I, you know, like do this, like I haven't been showing up on lives. And she's like, you get to do that live, you know? So the fact that I'm here is also as a result of her calling me forward Mm. so um let's talk so to 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 make my point clear i personally believe that doing something that we love on a soul level not something that we enjoy but something that we feel called to um will give business results as well Mm. because um that's how the universe works it's a vibrational law um and it's playing out in my life. At the end of the day, <laughs> let's, if we keep it super simple, um, I would rather make 50 grand a year doing photography than 150 doing something less than photography, other than photography. Mm-hmm. So just how I look at it. And I don't have it all figured out. Let's get clear. Like, I don't have it all figured out. I've got a whole bunch of mess in my life that I'm cleaning up right and it's, i'm making mm. mistakes left right and center this is not about me teaching um and you know maybe this my story can inspire some people and maybe there's a piece that can land from this life mm. 
Beautiful. Thank you. And so, Chris, we'll get back to your message or to your um, comment. And maybe this question. might totally fantastic. So, she, Krishla has asked Eric, do you feel you trust how you feel more now? Mm. And I feel like this also may connect into your full body fuck yeses as well. Uh huh. 100%. Mm. 100%. As men, to a higher degree than women, but also women, we are conditioned from a young age to say, boys don't cry, shut up, kids should be seen, not heard, and man up, don't be a pussy, mm. right? don't be a faggot. We've been told that our whole lives. Mm. And so feeling is associated with weakness. Right? or being a woman is associated with weakness mm. when it comes to how we express ourselves. And so I grew up like most men in our generation, uh, thinking that feeling was something that feelings was something that we just suppressed and kept to ourselves. Right? Mm. What I've learned that, that that happens is that feelings get stored in the body. If they are not expressed and allowed to complete themselves. So, right. Imagine there's a cycle right? Every emotion is a cycle. And so, for example, um, kids are the best teachers when it comes to this. I am so blessed to be photographing some kids at the moment. And oh my gosh, kids are the best, right? So we've got uh, Tom, Tom and uh, Jared, right? They're, they're playing in the playground, right? Let's say Tom and Jared are playing on the playground. Tom pushes Jared off the swing. Yeah, Jared's crying he's running to his mom don't push me off the swing mom mom push me off the swing <laughs> and they play they, they go like fully expressive ah! two minutes later what are they doing what's tom and J jared doing back playing on the swing together they're back on the swings baby yeah it's all good <laughs> it's all good <sighs> What is that? Mm. What's that about? The best <laughs> They're allowing their cycle to complete itself. What I was trained to do was as soon as something came up, for example, you know what? Anger, right? If anger came up. Something triggered my anger. I would notice it. Fuck, I'm angry. <clears throat> Stuff that down. Sugar that shit down. Eat that shit down. Video game that shit down. Sleep that down. Distract that down. And so what I've learned is that, that gets stored, that shit gets stored in the body. And I've when I went to Bridge and Extreme, what their what their workshop is really an embodiment workshop. Mm -hmm. It's not freaking taking notes and writing shit down. I've done plenty of that. And nothing nothing wrong with that. It's just up here. The body. It's start it's stored in the body. And so as soon as I released and I allowed myself to feel, going back to like, I thought life was this, I thought relationship was this, I thought like this was the scale I was playing on, I realized, fuck this, oh, wow, this is living, this is living. So the answer to your question, Chris, is uh, yes. <laughs> I love it. So I love it. Oh, my goodness. Yes, 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 yes to all of that. And for anyone who's watching in that you're watching me do these clicks, basically what that means is like, it's a full body fuck yes from me. <laughs> these clicks are like, yes, I fucking agree. Full body fuck yes. Thanks for reminding yeah, me. So right full ahead. body fuck yeses. What's, what's that about? Uh, so by the way, in the comments, mm. you can use, so that there's, a, there's a symbol that symbolizes the uh, full body fuck yes. And I'll put, this is the fuck yes right here. So that one, <laughs> if you see that one, that's that's how we, we write full body fuck yes in the comments. Anyway, what's a full body fuck yes? Okay, so every any anyone in the world can say yes, right? We can all say yes. I grew up as a people pleaser. We can again, mm. uh, my life was all about making, the, making women feel safe. I grew up as a people pleaser because I needed them to like me, I needed them to approve mm. of me so they wouldn't hurt me, it wouldn't exclude me. So I became a master people pleaser, right? amazing at it, right? Most people would say, oh, Eric, he's such a nice guy. Such a nice guy, I love him. 
all the women were saying, oh, he's the best. He's such a good guy. I wonder why. And no one wanted to fuck me, right? So, like, it was, I played that whole scenario out, and I was amazing at people pleasing. Now, my point is, everyone can say yes, right? I can say yes. Hey, hey, um, you, can, you can ask me, hey, Lauren, hey, Eric, could you, like, help me move? Could you help me move? I'm moving an apartment. Could you help? I could say yes. Yes? I could say yes mm. to that. I used to say yes, yes, and yes, and yes. Now, what eventually happens is I say yes to so many things, by default, Guess what happens when you say yes to something, but you really don't mean it? And, uh, what starts to happen? What's that feeling? Discomfort. It's like you get all these Discomfort. emotions that come on. Yeah. Exactly. I don't want it. Exactly. Mm. Brooke, it's a great point. Where do I, where'd you say yes from? Exactly. I was saying mm. yes from a place of hurt, from a place of needing approval. Totally. Right? Beautiful, Brooke. So here's my introduction to this uh, idea of full body fuck yes. Mm. I own, I live by full body fuck yeses now. Here's what, a, here's what a yes looks like. Yes. Yeah, sure. Absolutely. Yep. That's a yes. All right. A full body fuck yes is like, yes. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um, yes. Ha fuck yes. Oh my. <laughs> when do we start? Like, yeah. When, why didn't you come to this before? This is awesome. <laughs> like, yes. Right? We're, and we've all had this experience, right? We know what that feels like when we, mm. when, we, when we have a full body fuck yes in our body. It's like, yeah, 100%. Like, no. Let's do it, right? It's like, <laughs> so why is the distinction so important? Um, we live in a, in a universe that vibrates. Everything vibrates. We all know this, right? So, and especially your audience, they understand this. This is a cup, by the way, with an epic polar bear on it because that's my spirit animal. It's handmade, handcrafted by Australian ceremonial cacao founder, uh, Lena Gallagher. Thank you so much, Lena Gallagher. Anyway, we all know that everything vibrates. It's vibrating, all right? This is vibrating. It seems solid, but it's not, so it's vibrating. And I believe, personally, and from experience, that the higher we vibrate, the more enjoyable, more creative, meaning mm. bringing things into creation, into life, more creative our vibration becomes. So like the higher it is, the more enjoyable and creative it is. So for example, bringing things in from the 5D world, bringing things from idea into the 3D reality world, manifestation as it's known, right, is about high, vibrating higher, right? So I've set, made myself a commitment to go, I'm going to lean into full body fuck yeses. If it's not a full body fuck yes, it's a no. Mm. I feel like I've, I've, I've explained that clearly and I feel like that totally. lands for, the, for some people. Like that is all that's needed because we all have the experience of saying yes when we really don't mean it and then we end up resenting mm -hmm. Not only, not only the fact that we said yes, said yes, but the person who we said yes to, who has no fucking idea that like, they're not to blame, right? We're the one who said yes. Totally. So if it's not, a, and this is why I live by, if it's not a full body fuck yes, it's a no for now. Yes. Full body fuck yes to that. <laughs> Amazing. And Kim's just said, I love this and I so need it today. Beautiful. Thanks for watching, Kim. Um, mm, uh, you. you know, I fucking resonate with every, I, well, if no, I fucking resonate with all of that. That's a full body. Fuck yeah. Mm. From me, from all of that, for all of that. Mm. Uh, and so before we finish, what I would love, um, to ask you is, is there something that you don't get asked often enough, but that you love speaking about? Mm and that you would want to mm -hmm. share and drop today. Perfect. I'd love for you to do that. Yep. Oh, mm. oh, there's so much. And this is going to surprise a few people. So mm. people ask me a lot about photography and I get a lot of questions mm. about um, how to manage your emotions. And I get a lot of questions about um, how do you stay so positive? And I get, I get a lot of those questions. What I don't usually get asked um, is what are some things, how can women, and that's pretty fairly fitting, how can women encourage their men to rise up, mm. Um, mm. wake up, um, 
embody their power, right? Mm. How can women encourage men? And, or, or how can women attract the person, the man, their king, right? I don't get asked that a lot. And it makes complete sense because I haven't really put myself out there in that space, but I love talking about it. So I'm going to do that. I'm going to take the opportunity to do mm. that. Mm. So women, I'm assuming I'm speaking to women. If I'm speaking to men, perfect. Okay. Uh, I'm going to get some like real head nods going on. Like, mm. yes, 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 yes. <laughs> this is a, this is a plea to women. I alluded to it earlier and I would love to share it. Um, yeah. A plea to women. This is about love. This is about love. First of all, we don't have to be in a relationship, right? Let's be honest. We don't have to be in a relationship. Um, there are plenty of amazing humans who live beautiful, fulfilled lives as singles um, without an intimate relationship. So that's not, a, it's, and, and a lot of the times I ask myself this, you know, I go back to zero. Um, I go, what, what, why am I in this relationship? Like, if I, if I, everything was reset, would I choose this again? It's an important question to ask. So mm. I want to just state the fact that I choose to be in a relationship. The reason why is because it amplifies everything. Mm. I believe we're here to experience our life. We're not here to know about our lives. We're not here to plan our lives. We're not here to logic logistically make sense of our lives. I believe we're here to experience life. Mm. And so I choose a relationship because it amplifies my experience. It stretches my experience. The highs are way higher and the valleys are way lower. And the ride is crazier, right? And so that I choose a relationship. Now, men and women, let's talk about this. If I were to, to share a plea to women as a man, here's what I would say. First, celebrate the fact that we're different. Mm. You want more women, you want more, and we want less. Our nervous systems um, can't handle as much as yours can. So really think about and consider that before you give us what you want to give us. Consider what we need in the moment. Celebrate the differences. Second thing is the business tools, separate the business tools to succeed in business, separate them from the relationship tools. Right? They're different tools. Right? We don't, it, we don't want to be told what seminar to go to. We don't want to be told what book to read. We don't want to be told what podcasts to listen to. We don't want that from you. In fact, we want more of your vulnerability, more of your heartache. We want more of your surrender. We want to be called to a place where we can be your heroes. We live to be your heroes. And we can't do that if you don't need it, you don't need us. So here's a story, here's a little story. Now this is gonna cause some, some flack and it might trigger some people. So I'm totally open to that. I'd love to have the conversation, but from a simplicity standpoint so that we can create understanding and it's not a, it's not a perfect story, but here's a story. We all know it. The prince, prince travels across the great lands through the forest and he sees a tower in the tower He's a princess. Comes out of the forest. In front of the tower, guess what? Fire breathing dragon. A dragon. Now, Prince, in this case, has two choices, right? One, he can slay the dragon, grab the princess, live happily ever after, or he can go, fuck that. I'm not going to do that, right? We have two choices. Men are very simple. So, what is going to compel the man to embrace his power, summon the force and courage mm. to slay the dragon. What's it going to be? Imagine, imagine the princess sitting up in the tower going, 
You know what? It's fine. I've got my own laptop. I've got my own uh, business. I'm fine. I, I've got. Tell you what. I've got I'm nannies. Good. I've got. I'm, you know what? I don't. <laughs> I don't. I'm good. I don't need a man, right? Playing Beyonce, right? I don't need a man, right? It's fine, right? Imagine if she's sitting up in the towers, like, yeah. you know what? I'm fine. Man's not going to be very inspired by that. Just physiologically, it's how we're built to be your heroes, which is fine. You don't need a man. Mm. I'm not saying you, anyone needs a man. However, if you want a man, we want to be called to be your heroes. So we want more of your vulnerability, we want more of your heartache. We want the pain of you not having us yet, not feeling us mm. yet. Okay. And I know I'm coming at it from a place of like knowing this stuff. I'm exploring this. I'm stepping into this myself. And so I, I feel the best way to, to learn it is really to teach it. And so that's why I'm using this as a platform. And I hope that it, it adds value. Next Perfect. one. Next one. Find one. Jamie does this. Oh, my gosh. <laughs> this, lights, this lights us up as men. If you want to light your man up, do this. All right. Find one thing each day that you fully trust about us and honor us with that every day. That one thing. You may hate our guts. You might feel completely unappreciated, but find one thing every day that you can implicitly trust and honor us with that. For example, Jamie, Jamie and I have gone through freaking storms over the last week and a half, and we've elevated to a level I never thought possible, but it's been fucking stormy and painful and scary and oh, uncertain. Every day, she would come back to me and she would say, you know what? I can always trust that you're going to be there at the end of the night. I can always trust that no matter what's going on, you will always hear me out. Mm. Right? Simple things. Keep it simple and honor us with that. It will light us up and open us and crack us open to become the man that you crave us to be. Mm. Oh, two more. Do we have time? <laughs> Yeah, this absolutely. And also, if anyone is watching Perfect. this and you're fucking resonating with this, I would love for you to drop some love. I am so loving this. Um, I know for me as a woman, I'm so loving this because I, I like it's how beautiful, how beautiful that we get to hear this. Oh, yes. So much mm. yes. Please mm. share the last two and please feel free to drop some love. Guys, if you are watching this or if you have any questions, drop them in. Yep. All right. Second to last thing, fourth mm -hmm. point is find ways to continually move your body. Mm -hmm. Right? And moving in terms of, so less tough mutter, more mm -hmm. sacred dance. Right? Mm -hmm. right? It's less CrossFit. It's more. <laughs> And body blow. Mm. blow, right? Find ways to move your body, drop in to your pleasure. Um, you have the power to completely make our day mm. just by the way you move. Uh, I introduced this to Jamie, and she said, Really? Like, what are you talking about? Like, the way I move? Like, I don't understand. Yeah, she's, I'm like, yeah, like, just move. Like, the, the, the key for most women in this day and age is slow down your movement. All that's needed is for you to slow down. When you walk to the bathroom, slow down. The way that you wash your face, slow down. Make a cup mm -hmm. of tea, slow it down. The way you speak, slow it down. And men will start paying attention. It's such an attractive quality in a woman. The point of that, and Jamie speaks about it amazingly. She's the embodiment 
uh, of mm. of the divine feminine, as far as I'm concerned. You know, along with you, Lauren, like there's amazing just and and oh, she's always moving. She's always in the morning. She's like, babe, I love you. I just need to go do my movement practice. <laughs> so she she goes into does her you know sacred mm. dance, and I most of the time I you know I just watch because it's so hot. Mm-hmm. but it doesn't it's not for anyone else it's the key right it does it's not for anyone else yeah. it's not a it's not a sexy dance for your man that's not what it is it's you dropping into your body and flowing so oh my god it's been game changer in mm-hmm. our relationship find ways to move mm-hmm. slow down slow down mm. oh mm. oh oh man can i get a Fuck yes. All right. <laughs> last thing, last thing. And I feel like I'm going to give you superpowers now. So this is going to be um, the last thing that I'll share about what men crave and what men like lead to women is <laughs> men, what works for us, right? What we love, what works for us, what puts us in a good mood, what empowers us almost once you find it, almost always works, right? So we're very simple that way. So like if you find, for example, if you find that giving us a compliment when we do something right, right? When we, for example, take the bins out or when we (laughs) clean up the room or when we do the laundry, simple stuff. Hmm. If you give us a compliment, if you honor us with presents and kisses and woof, usually that's going to work every single time. We're very simple that way. There's nothing to figure out. We're very simple. In many ways, we're actually kind of like, you know, and no offense to any man out there, like I'm the same. We're, we're kind of like puppies. Yes. We're really like puppies. Like, that's a simple way to think about it. We're simple as, here's, here's okay. the mistake. Imagine, imagine you're dealing with a puppy, right? Play with me here. Imagine you're dealing mm-hmm. with a puppy, right? Let's say your man's a puppy, all right? Here's what t- typically happens in relationship. When a puppy poops on the carpet, do you typically smack him across the room, throw him out the door and say, bad dog, and throw the dirt in his face? Is that what you do? Mm, I hope it depends not. on who's the owner. <laughs> no, no, yeah, but if it's your puppy and you want to train your puppy, are you with me? Hopefully not. Yeah. No, that's not what we yeah. do with puppies. That's not what we do with puppies. Yeah. We don't slap them across the room and, and throw them out yeah. and throw dirt in the face. We don't do that with puppies. We go, oh, mm-mm, nope. And we move them outside and we go there. Right? What do we do when the puppy poops exactly where he's supposed to? Outside. Good boy. What do we do to a puppy? Good boy. Well done. So we give him a treat, right? <laughs> so good. Puppy goes, oh my god, that was so good. I don't, I'm I don't know. amazing. That. I don't know. <laughs> exactly. Exactly. So, well, I don't. Yeah. They don't understand why they did that. So you have. So you do it consistently, right? So you do it consistently. So every time they poop outside, you go, that was amazing. Wow. Mm. Give them a treat. And, they go, and, and eventually, puppies will figure out. Oh, okay. All right. So if I poop here, I get a treat. Mm. If I poop there, I don't get a treat. Oh, all right. Makes sense. Mm. Men are simple. We're very straightforward, right? Repetitive actions and treats. You're absolutely right, Laura. Yes, puppies don't understand. They need repetitive actions and treats. Men are the same. We're the same, all right? Now, it's not a derogatory thing. It's just how we're wired. We're just different. We have, a, we have incredible power to hold. Like our, our, goal, our masculine power is to hold the stillness for, for the feminine to dance around, right? It's mm. amazing. And we're simple. We're very simple. So what Jamie... The most common complaint that men have is that, man, when we fuck up, we hear about it for weeks. Right? We're in the doghouse, right? When we fuck up, we're, 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 we hear about it for weeks. And when we do something right, we get a, eh, you know, energy. Yeah? Mm. So the invitation and the last point, the last point, I want to drive this on. The last mm. point is use the same <laughs> level of intensity Mm-hmm. of enthusiasm that you did when we fucked up and use that level when we do do something right. And here's how ridiculous it becomes, but it works. Okay. Ready? <laughs> Jamie wanted me to keep the socks off of the floor. Right. So we, we decided to try this thing. Right. So 
I would leave the sock on the floor. She would look at the sock. Hmm. She would look at me. She would look at the sock. She would look at me. And I'll go, <sighs> I'll pick up the sock. I would put it in the laundry basket. She would go, baby, I love it when you put socks in the laundry basket. I love you so much. She would give me kisses. She would give me touch. And she would be like, oh, I feel so safe when you, when you put the, the, um, the socks away. Thank you so much. Now, it seems really ridiculous. ridiculous. And this is, I want to stress that this is not something that needs to be done repeat, all over and over again. We were just training a puppy. Now I, now I just put the mm. socks away. And mm. she's like, babe, I'm so grateful that you do that. She doesn't have to go all, that, all the way. But we're simple and we're so conditioned to like, I don't want to <laughs> fuck up. So if you could honor us when we do something right with the same enthusiasm as mm. you used to do when we fucked up, you'll have a different man over time. A different man. Yeah. Train your men. Train your men, women. Train your men. Uh, we want perfect. it. We love it. <laughs> Yes, yes, yes. Um, gosh, this is perfect. It's been so synchronistically timed for, I know, people in my life. And I know it's going to be beautiful for everyone else who is watching this. I want to share. So Rhonda has left a comment for you. And she's going to, yeah, she's dropping some love. She says, Eric, you are incredibly amazing, honest, expanding, and joyful. I have something to share with you. From the very first conscious leaders I attended with Run yourself your beautiful queen and others i will message you today thank you for your full body oh. <laughs> fuck yes from me oh beautiful thanks Rhonda. thank you Rhonda. Mm, mm. thank you way to keep everyone, everyone on the live hanging <laughs> tuning in oh my gosh awesome. so beautiful mm. yeah i know i want to hear what it is <laughs> um yeah yeah me too so uh, i feel like that's such a beautiful place to land to bring everyone into that space. And I would love for you to share where everyone can contact you because oh, if you have not had a photo shoot with Eric, I implore you mm. to get in that room in front of that camera. And mm. even if it's not in a room, be in front of his camera. I have not experienced so much safety, first and foremost, so much trust, and so much passion for your work, for the work, and for my vision as a human soul coming to you, wanting to bring it into a 3D form, regardless of what I mm. did or didn't know it looked like. Mm. So I would, oh, so I want to, yeah, I want to thank you for that. And I would really love for you to be able to share with everyone how they come to connect in with you, how do they work with you, even what you have coming up. Yeah, I would love that. Love to. Love to. Thank you for that. Um, so it's really simple. I, um, I do discovery calls with every single person. Yeah. Um, before, they, before I ever work with anyone, I jump on a, on a video call or a, or a normal call and I'm only working with people that I'm a full body fuck yes to, mm -hmm. um, where I know that my medicine will serve um, mm -hmm. in every way. And so, um, yeah, it's really simple. You just message me here on Facebook or on Instagram, mm -hmm. Eric Bergen Photographer, uh, Eric Bergen Photographer, and you just message me and then we'll jump on a call uh, and a real face-to-face -face kind of guy. So mm -hmm. that's it. Beautiful. And I know mm -hmm. that everyone watching this will... Oh, as you can see, Eric is so, oh, there's, there's, there's no hiding. There's no masks. There's complete safety, complete, ah, oh, just relatability. You're yeah. So I, I just know that that would be so, I get excited to know that people are going to connect in with you with that because <laughs> it's beautiful. Mm -hmm. Thank so you. before we finish up, I would like to, I would like to deeply fucking acknowledge you as like deeply as if I'm, I really wish I had almost like a triton like sword and hammering it into the earth and be like, oh, mm -hmm. full body fuck yes acknowledgement to you mm -hmm. for leaning in and doing the work, for having the courage 
to do that as a human being, as a man, with all the stories, all the conditionings, everything that can come along with that for trusting yourself, for choosing yourself. And I want to really acknowledge you for how far I've seen that take you even in these eight months that I have known you. And I would really, Mm. I want to celebrate you for being the human being that you are in your courage, Mm. in your charisma, in your magnetism, in your strength, fucking Mm. full force strength as a male in your masculine and the way in which you express all of that into the world. Mm. So thank you. Wow. Thank you for joining oh. today. Mm. Received. I love you. Thank you, sister. Mm. I love you too. Mm. Mm. Mm-hmm. So for anyone who has just jumped on... <laughs> You get to watch the replay. We've come to the end, but it is juicy. <laughs> you will not want to miss this one. <laughs> Absolutely. Oh, thank you so much for being here. Thank you for sharing your wisdom, your the expression mm. of life that's poured through only you with my tribe, with my audience and yours. And thank you everyone who has jumped on and watched. If you have any more questions for Eric about anything that has landed today, please feel free to drop them in the comments or to message him directly, whether it be a question or a pull to work with this incredible human being. Mm. Mm. Yes. Thank you you for having (sighs) me. You're so welcome. You're amazing. (laughs) (laughs) You're amazing. (laughs) Thank you. (laughs) Uh, all right see you later everyone (laughs) 